manage it or not. And I would like to show you a quick overview of a software called Backstage, Backstage IO, because I think it's a, it, it could be interesting to all GitLab. It's actually it's a very similar idea of what they want to be that GitLab has with a single application for the whole DevOps lifecycle, but they have a totally different approach to it. Uh, basically, they just wrap all the other existing services. What makes them very interesting at the same time <clears throat> is that this is actually a product from Spotify. Uh, they use it internally, so by design, it's validated. Uh, they use it itself. As a result, you can learn a lot about how they approach several things. Let me share my screen, and I will drive you through a demo of it. And but before we get to demo, just to give you an idea what it is really, <coughs> uh, I will link this YouTube video as well under the under uh, this current video that I'm recording. So this is an app store for all the developer tools they have. Uh, it says that supercharged developers, and it's a really standard interface through which engineers. Uh, interact with all these tools, including GitHub, uh, Circle CI, the Kubernetes networks, uh, and many, many other things. It's uh, very much pluggable, and uh, it's part of the CNC, it's within the CNCF sandbox project. Um, the setup itself is very simple, so simple that I could uh, test it out on a Thursday afternoon. So let's get to that. This is the website, uh, and here's my locally running version of it. Um, I already set up <coughs> the configuration so I could log into GitLab. And now it's basically almost empty. There are two pre-made services, but I'm not going to go into these ones. Instead, I will show you the ones that I created for this demo, and I will create another one as well. Let's start with creating one. I hope I won't fail doing that. Uh, let's start with the React. Uh, template, as you can see, they have templates, and you might think that, oh, we have project templates as well. Actually, you are wrong. What they have is a logic that runs when you create a new project. It's not just a git fork of an existing project. As a result, they can set up environment variables, they can set up the Kubernetes cluster. At this specific moment, they can set up everything because there's logic behind these things. And I would say that we have all the details for that as well. Um, unique name, uh, backstage demo, backstage demo, uh, demo react app. I will use that because I don't need to have actions. Next steps, <clears throat> the owner. Um, user management is uh, two resources here as well. This is not set up properly, so it won't make much sense, but anyway, let's do something. And then comes the store path. This is very, very interesting actually, because I'm just going to give them a path that does not exist yet. Uh, give me a repo. I don't have such a repo. And I should access it, of course. Uh, OK, we get a summary. And then we could create. As you can see, there is some kind of runner runs behind the hood. Actually, it's a Docker instance. I can show it in, in a Docker dashboard. Um, it does many things until we, it finishes. I'm going to pause the recording. If I find the button. Back, as you can see, it took around five minutes to, to get all of it done. It had a prepare step. It did something there. I had no idea what it was. Then a templating one. Here, it actually runs uh, the create React app command that creates the repository itself and many other things as well. Could be done. And then it publishes the repo to GitLab and registers it within. Um, but in backstage. Now we can open it in the catalog, in the service catalog. And here we have it. it's a website, 
next to the demo. I can check out the source code, but before we get to that, uh, let's find it as well. So we are back to the catalog view where we have websites, and there I have all of them, and here's the backstop demo that we just created. <clears throat> A few things around this one is that <clears throat> you might think that actually we have the same thing because we have repositories, we have a nice structure with groups that end in the repository, but actually the mental model of backstage is totally different. And following the idea of, of uh, how users, many of them think, this might be better. Many users, especially microservice oriented users. Um, and I presume that many of us are aware of this, that usually our users organize, map the organization to a group. That means that the developer team owns a whole group and then uh, a higher level like a squad is a parent group of that group and then there might be engineering organization or department that is the parent of that, etc. So if you want to find a microservice, then actually you have to know the owner because you have to know that, okay, in order to find, I don't know, the purchasing microservice, I know that it has to be some other purchasing organization in squad A, in team B, and then I can find repository. Here, the mentor model is just the opposite. It just says that I want to find a purchasing uh, microservice. So what I'm doing, I'm going to catalog and I'm searching for it. Actually, I can they have even better search for that, but <clears throat> it's just the other way around. The idea here is that you want to find given service with its owner, with its responsible people, with its code base, documentation, APIs, etc. And this is how they approach this whole topic. Anyway, let's get back here and uh, let's create a new another component. Uh, this will be an application that I've created already. So I'm just going to import it actually. <clears throat> Uh, to give you an idea of why I'm doing that, here you can see that for links, add some kind of links to metadata thing, and then there's some tech docs, what it might be. So I, I created already uh, an application that actually provides these things. So register an existing component. And here, what something you can see, that the a record in the service registry, because actually it's a service registry, is described in the YAML format. This is nothing new, nothing fancy, I would say. So that's imported. Again, this was just a React app, like what it did. But this one has a link to one of the, uh, the Hungarian news sites that I read regularly, and it has a link to Pack Docs as well. And that is documentation added to this interface. Now it's generating documentation. That's why it takes a bit longer. But once it's generated, it opens much faster. Uh, so give you an idea about that, it will just open like this. <clears throat> um, it uses mkdocs behind the hood uh, for structuring these documentations and so on and so forth. It, it's just a nice approach to put together everything from a service registry point of view. Then I'm going to, yeah, can I have, you see a few things here like CI/CD, that's by default Circle CI, Lighthouse is Google, errors uh, could be Kubernetes, docs is the one that I just showed you. Kubernetes, I'm going to show you this, and clearly there are coding sites and code class with uh, GitHub, basically. So uh, let me show you another project that I'm going to import, show you its Kubernetes integration. Actually, that's why I started to look into it. I have it already set up. Uh, a cluster. It's already running here. You can see everything. This is uh, an example code coming from from backstage uh, code actually. And we have balances tab here, and everything works uh, okay. So error reporting. There are a few errors because. Was created as such to have errors. Um, here we are fine, but actually we can't find some config max. There are some image problems, probably, and so on and so forth. 
And then it has my cluster still, which has 11 pods running and, nine, and six pods had errors, had errors. The errors were actually already written out at the top. And here's everything else. Uh, as you can see with the dice roller deployment, I have a bit more information than just the number of pods running or not running. The reason for this is that it has a horizontal pod auto scaler attached. And I can see it's um, it's uh, details if I want to. And then here we go with the detailed pods as well, where I can have a view into each code if I want to. Basically, this is the Kubernetes integration. Uh, there's nothing fancy about this Kubernetes integration, and I would say it can provide the same thing. It just uses labels. You have to uh, tab both to your uh, Kubernetes manifest that these are labels, and you have to say the same thing in the annotations part of this registered service. This YAML file is a service register file used by Backstage. Uh, let me share, see if I want to speak about anything else. Yeah. Okay. Um, the team and user pages <clears throat> are pretty neat, I have to say. So uh, let's go back to something that wasn't created by me, like uh, this team A. You can see immediately that they own more services, they have more website, three APIs, they are members, and so on and so forth. And this just helps people to reach out to this team as well. So the use case here is that this is very specific. I want to find a service. I want to find some responsible data. There might be on board who have to but not. So that's what we have to do. Um, the other thing is the cost of moving page is not set up properly, I think, but still it's kind of nice. Uh, it gives you an idea that what you can have, you can have breakdown by product or by project. Uh, you can have the uh, cost to be by various things there and, and so on and so forth. This is a little set up a little bit outside of the service registry part because I can't have cost per service, which would be might be more interesting in some use cases. But clearly at the same time it shows us something. What are the data that these people are looking at? that Spotify is interested in and probably other similar companies are interested in as well. Another really nice thing that I, I think would be super simple to add to GitLab and could be a, a nice marketing feature, I would say, is uh, Stackradar. I'm sure that many of you have seen uh, this from various analyst reports and so on and so forth. Um, at first, my idea was that this shows the technologies used in the service registry, and it doesn't make much sense in that case. Um, it does make some sense, but not much. But actually, what it does is very different from that. And this is um, somewhere someone can propose these technologies. And when you start new, the use case around this is that if you want to start a new project and you you don't know which technologies to choose for that project, then you go to the stack radar and see the recommendations of the company. So these are the recommended technologies for us. So depending on the riskiness of your project, your timeline, et cetera, you can pick the technologies that suit you best. Um, and as a result, this is coded again, outside of the service registry. It, doesn't use it, those data that are in the service registry, but we could actually provide both something like a, an overview of what's higher services look like, and another one that is the uh, CTO recommendation of which technologies to use. Do I have anything else? No, that was it. So um, thanks for watching this video, and let me know if you have any feedback. I'm going to link in on YouTube in the description, the original demo video of Backstage, where they present their use cases as well. And um, I will link the, the website as well. Thanks.